Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Marjolaine and today I wanted to make a video in which I explain a little bit, a little bit more um, my passion, my love, my devotion, everything about the Joker 2018 movie. And as you can see, yeah, I'm, I'm really into that movie. <laughs> so basically I already did videos in the past, okay, but um, I wasn't really um, talking. I was mostly too nervous and I used a voice from uh, text-to-speech online. And um, I just really wanted to explain it all while I'm in my Joker cosplay. Because, uh, yeah, a new challenge. Um, well, actually, I, I changed myself, but I used this as a tool. Um, how I first won the painting from League, which is Gary in the movie. Um, then, after how I saw that Joaquin was coming in Montreal um, and um, to film. Disappointment Boulevard, which is now Boop is Afraid, and that I met him. So, that part of meeting working will be in another video because I know that it's, it's gonna be a too long video. Um, so, uh, on this video on YouTube below, where you will see the story of me meeting working. So, basically, I just wanted to give a little trigger warning beforehand. Because I'm gonna talk about abuse, I'm gonna talk about uh, severe mental illnesses, I'm gonna talk about bullying, deep emotions. So if you think it's gonna be too sensitive for this, I, I might recommend to watch another video. Um, and also, there is a warning for uh, spoiler <laughs> because, of course, I'm gonna talk about the movie itself. So, if you didn't watch it, I would recommend to watch it before. So, basically, I just wanted to explain a little bit my life um, and uh, in link to the to the movie. And I just want to specify that something that I found really odd and surprising because you know when you're stuck in, in, into a bad situation a lot of times you don't realize how bad it is because you're used to it but um, um, I was born actually in poverty um, my father was there physically Mentally, yes and no, but uh, mostly it's the mother who was really physically, mentally, sexually, psychologically abusive. And I was like a, the only child, no brothers, no sisters. Um, and from as long as I can remember, I always been alone, very lonely, um, and I was always wondering why my parents were so rude to me, what I, what I was doing wrong, uh, especially my mother. My father was alcoholic, he uh, was not really that for me either, but the more, like for what I can remember from my childhood, like my past is very blurry, um, and I was always going in my room because I was scared of myself. I was giving physical mental violence over and over again. Um, and for like as long as I can remember my mother we said she she hoped that she would have made an abortion with me. Um, um, it took a long time to realize that I always was starting to fight flight freeze, but mostly the freeze response. Um, and then I became a pleaser, a pleaser, especially to my mother, 
because I was so afraid of her being violent that to escape any uh, possibility of fight, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this, okay, I'm gonna do this without even really realizing. Um, so, something that happened many times is that she. First, me to go find our friends' place, like no friends, and to enter corpse. Well, for many years, I was forcing myself to try to remember what happened, but it's useless. I just remember they were they were on top of me, and maybe people asked me why did she do that. For money? No. My mother was very, 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 very unhappy, very sick, very... Um, she wanted to be in competition with me, and I had to be the mother for her. Um, if I wasn't giving her reassurance, uh, if I wasn't doing everything she wanted, she was... Um, uh, in any everywhere possible. I went into sex work, she was trying to force me to be with a friend. But um, also for as long as I can remember, every time I was trying to work somewhere, um, I was getting fired for any kind of reason. They were saying I was stealing when I was not. I was like trying to fight, and I I had to send like the videotape of the place I was working at to like the organization of the government, so I can prove I could prove that I wasn't stealing um, because I was like an easy target. I was very 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 fragile, so I was like the target of bullies and. When I went into high school, from secondary one to five, I've been severely bullied. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of school at the same time as everyone else because Jennifer, Simon, Alexandre, and, and all those people were waiting in front to punch me, spit on me. So what I was doing, as I was doing on the dinner. I was escaping and I was locking myself in the bathroom. No, nope, not yet. Okay. What was I doing in the bathroom? Hmm? We were between 1997 and 2001. So I had my CD player and the song I was listening to, Children of the More Robert Files. Danced. Not during the dinner time, but there it was because I couldn't confront the police. So I was eating my dinner there if not, and getting sick because of the stress. But I cannot express how alone I felt. At home, I was escaping either in my, the, bedroom, the bedroom or my bedroom, and if I was going into my bedroom, she was looking me stopping me from eating. So for me, every time I see the subway scene, with the three guys, and he runs to go to the bathroom to dance, that's what I'm thinking about. But also what they were doing, Simon, Alexandre, Jennifer. Well, it was Simon that did this one, to bully me because I was looking like a guy. He took my, um, you know, when you finish secondary five, I didn't finish my secondary five, but I had like made the picture at the beginning of the year and I had short hair, I looked like a guy, and he exposed me like a public space, a place, you know, I don't know how you say that, but like everywhere, everywhere, just go during the dinner, and there were like doing projections of movie there sometimes. So. Yeah, so 
I was I was going home. I was getting really bored, like abused and blah blah blah. I was going back to school. I was bullied into violence. I thought, what did I do to cope? I create myself a fake boyfriend. It was my way of coping because of him, I was safe. And his name was Patrick. I don't know if this is what you see. The Arthur and Sophie. That's what I saw. Yeah, I saw. No schizophrenia. I mean, that's what I saw because she was only there when he was having the most difficult moments. She's not here anymore, the Joker. So I'm severely poor since I'm a kid. Here, the more it goes, the more the system is failing us. People tell me, oh, you should do this, this, you you will have access to that, that, and it's not the case. No access to therapy. Okay. Welfare is not recognizing my conditions, giving not enough, not even enough money to uh, this friend. I can eat, but I, I, I am poor to a point that I cannot even buy groceries after. And I have to stress to try to have donations, food bank, they don't have enough, they have more and more people. I have severe allergies, and every time that I ask for donations, I get bullied, and I get called, you're fucking lazy, you have to work, and no, you don't want to work, you're lazy. And like, like the therapist I had, like in the past, said, poverty, chronic poverty is a trauma. So it's a trauma that you add to those I have. I have complex PTSD, which is a trauma that was built in childhood. And this is so destructive to the brain, and it's so super hard to get out of poverty. And the anger I have. The anger I have, the severe, like I have like severe mental illnesses, I cannot explain to you guys how much I feel like Joker. And I get the same answers over and over again. This is not healthy what you do me. Yeah, but you're just putting a mask on. Yeah, but you should do this without having to do Joker. And I understand why people think that. But therapist I saw at the time, two years ago, like I, I could see one, but like for a short time, because I couldn't um, continue to pay. Um, she said it's actually something that is made in therapy, but people just don't know about it. So they just judge or they, they, they think that it's not good. But that's why I'm making this video, because it's also for awareness about uh, mental illness. And um, for what I do, how people can feel, um, like it's not as easy as it may sound. But for me, this movie is a voice for the voiceless. It's um, a call for empathy. I'm not saying it's okay what he did, but people just tend to look at his actions. They don't tend to look at what happened it was okay at the beginning of the movie and people always tend to tell me yeah but you you had a word like a, a big pass and you didn't do that yeah but I'm not in the movie <laughs> I'm in the real life and I don't want to this movie to be an instruction manual so when I say that I, I see myself like always being or third that try to become Joker. No, I don't want to kill anybody. So, for me, I, I try through um, self-exploration, self-awareness, um, and I'm always fascinated by the fact that I want to give him into my stories, personal stories, like fictions, what he never received. So, I create stories where I will play difficult situations, and like it's called uh, in to psychodrama drama therapy, it's catharsis. So when you feel exactly like the character because of 
the same life experience, we relate so much. Um, so when I practice a difficult situation, when I come from someone like a, from the government, it's more like I simulate stories, it transforms into my real life. So at the beginning, at the very beginning, I was um, practicing as, on a song and I was very, very suicidal. And maybe a few months ago, I remade a scene where I'm emotional over life. I dance on the same song, and after I realized, my God, I only did dance on that song. So I'm going to compare both together. And since the beginning, I'm always concentrating on one scene, when he gets out of the subway in slow motion, uh, after escaping the cops. And for me, this is a, like, um, this is a, like a scene. That, I have, that he has like this train that I want to have as a metaphor. I'm like, oh, I'm going to practice it, practice it. And I just, I, I didn't realize. When I looked at both videos, I'm going to put it there now. Uh, it works. Okay, so right now I want to show you guys um, the very first video that I did. Um, this is a time when I was uh, at the very beginning after watching the movie I was very 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 suicidal I connected a lot to this character and I told myself you know you have a lot of emotions you have the same emotion as him just try and um, release emotions while dancing in the bathroom like the bathroom dance but I have no memory of doing this video at all. I had too much emotions to let out and since then it's been non-stop what I do, how I evolve. Um, I was looking at other cosplayers and I was always constantly jealous of them, of their talent, uh, very low self-esteem coming from like severe abuse and trauma. And I just challenged myself because I want to look exactly like him. And I knew that if I worked on my self-confidence with that, it would reflect on any other aspect of my life. And I never finished a project in my life because I have too much low self-esteem. And I started doing the makeup. I stopped. I was, I was constantly in battle with myself and I told myself, no, you do it, I stop, I do it again um, and after maybe after two years, here I am but um, I want to sh show you that particular video yes, there is the emotional uh, impact from the first video but you're gonna see also the evolution of the makeup Okay, but mostly, I didn't even realize it, the evolution in the strength and confidence that is also reflecting in my life. And I do have the look that he has when he walks slow motion.
and I just I, I didn't even realize when I look at both videos I'm gonna put it there now uh, it works and just because of that scene and because of the role play I practice more and more standing my ground um, um, affirming myself and this helps me thinking just living for me is an act of resistance As the game's popularity exploded, researchers in the field of mental health began to recognize that it might have potential for more than just fun. It might actually be therapeutic. I know what you're thinking. How? Role-playing. This process is what allows us to be an effective therapeutic tool because it gets our brain in a state where it is primed to learn and grow and evolve in ways that we can't do normally. Researchers are beginning to argue that while the experience of Dungeons & Dragons is fictional, <laughs> the experiences gained within the game are capable of generating authentic emotional responses. That there can be some transference between the game world and the lessons you learned there and our real world. Basically, the game tricks us into letting our guard down. As players immerse themselves in the personas, the defense mechanisms that might be present in their everyday life don't activate. As they immerse themselves in a story that they tell with their friends, they begin to experience a social situation with the lowest stakes possible. Feelings that form the traditional roadblocks, like anxiety or pressure, tend to evaporate. And in their place can arise feelings of competency, confidence, and fun. These feelings, while rooted in a fictional experience, can actually transfer back into our real life. Its tool as a therapeutic tool lies in its ability to simulate worlds for us to practice ourselves and practice who we want to be, making it a very effective option. Doing this, creating art, is an act of resistance. So, I'm just so happy. Um, and I remember also at the very beginning I was seeing a movie educator and I almost fainted because I was not expecting to see the most a reflect of myself. The same abuse that my mother did. Left alone, never understood, trying to be happy but just having people judging me all the time in the bus or everywhere I was going to. And people just saying I was ex exaggerating, but this is, people go through that. Now, it, it, I think that if you're not like as hypersensitive broken, maybe it's gonna happen less, but it happens, it's happening to a lot of people. I was watching a video that I wrote with them here, and I stopped crying because it was Todd Phillips who was walking, reading a letter of a fan explaining how the movie took her help. And I was thinking, this is so sad. I would, I would love to tell Joaquin. And I was, oh no, Joaquin was, it would be too hard to. You made a lot of noise, and a lot of it was just that noise. But when the fog cleared, the thing I took most from it was the impact it had on people around the world. I had people come up to me at screenings, sharing their struggles with loneliness and with feeling invisible, and others sharing their experiences with mental illness. One girl said she has a sister with schizophrenia, and after seeing the movie, she realized she would treat her differently and be a little more patient and treat her with kindness and understanding. Um, I got tons of emails from people in the same vein and I'm just going to read one quick that I got literally three days ago and I thought was appropriate in context of this award. He said, hello Todd, I'm a big fan of your work. I love the stories and elements you use in your films, but Joker sticks out like a sore thumb personally in my life. This movie touches a dark past that I've never really understood. My mother was very abusive and cruel to me as a child, but also showed me so much kindness and always knew how to make me smile. Joaquin is like a grown-up version of me. Watching it, I had laughing and crying fits just like Arthur, thinking back at all the memories I keep of my mom. 
It's helped me and cured my heart, which aches a lot. Thank you. And uh, it's crazy to think that the stories we tell can reach that far and touch that deeply. Uh, but they do, and I feel so lucky to be able to do this. And thank you for noticing. Thank you. This is so sad. I would, I would love to tell Joaquin. And I was, oh no, Joaquin was, it would be too hard to approach. I had this feeling of them, not because I'm screwed, but maybe like me reserved. And a few months after I participate uh, at a contest that League uh, Gil was organizing, League, which is the actor that played uh, Gary, um, that could escape from the apartment. One of uh, is of myself uh, from the Joker movie. The winner will be announced on the 10th of all. The winner has been drawn and it is Marjolaine Robichaud from Canada. I saw that he was coming to Montreal. So it really made me cry uh, because I was, oh my god, <laughs> I would love to tell Joaquin but it must be so hard to access to reach like to reserve and to express how much this movie means to me and impacted me but I knew how impossible it will be so I actually met him I did Being beat up, not as a clown but as a mascot, fireman dog, being bullied and beaten up in high school, the way people judged me, society treated me, how I got treated when I snapped and punched my abusers. Here in Montreal, I am in poor health and very poor. For therapy there is too long a waiting list in the free services and they cut the services, like Arthur. Here is why, therefore, to cosplay and create so much in connection with this film, frees me. It's therapeutic. It is a safe filter to free me from my emotions. I use the characters as the therapy I do not have. When emotions block or paralyze you, when you've kept strong and firm in life's hardest situations, and suddenly you can't cope any longer and you break. That's when you get help processing these experiences and emotions through catharsis and its subsequent analysis. Catharsis can take place during the course of therapy, but it can also occur during other moments as well. What I do is a lot like what they do in therapy with psychodrama. Psychodrama, this type of therapy involves acting out difficult events from the past. By doing so, people are sometimes able to reassess and let go of the pain from these events. A string of unfortunate events or a traumatic experience can cause a feeling of turmoil that builds and builds. Eventually, you may reach a point where you feel like there's so much emotion bottled up inside that you become overwhelmed and feel you're about to explode. When that happens, catharsis psychology can be extremely helpful. life story and a lot of people told me which I it is which is for me a super great compliment I would never be bothered by that but I've been told like you are such a good actress and like oh my god every scene of Joker you make is so good and at, 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 at every time I'm like wow that was not even the point. What I mean is that every scene of the movie reflects something I went through or still go through. Um, and 
because I'm stuck, you know, in severe poverty. Um, I'm stuck with my trauma. I'm stuck with a lot of um, emotions that are unresolved. And I'm trying to resolve still, and I'm tra I feel trapped in a situation of illness, of poverty. Uh, I have so much in here to let out from my past, um, it's, and it's a way, like a very creative way. I feel like him so much. I always felt like Arthur. I feel like Joker too. Um, I, I don't. I'm, I don't. I'm not gonna kill anybody, to be assured. But um, like the social inequalities are the same. The abuse of the mother is the same. I, am, I was not adopted and I have a father which is kind of a little distant but everything that he goes through, I went through it or still go through it and so every time I do a scene I don't even have to put myself into his shoes or like oh my god it must be feeling like that or I don't have to think about anything. I just already feel it. I already feel it completely. Especially the Mary Franklin show. This scene for me represents exactly the same anger, the same sadness, the same tiredness of living in a society like that, that doesn't give a shit. Just by example. The fact that I'm struggling to eat. The fact that I'm struggling to meet my basic basic needs. Just like right now, I feel it. Right now, I feel it. I feel it all the time. And if I do the scene right now, I will be a good actress. Nobody thinks what it's like to be the other guy. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? Because I already feel that feeling. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be somebody but themselves, they don't. They think that we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys. That we won't werewolf and go wild. You finished? I mean, there's so much self-pity, Arthur. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. You're awful. Me? I'm awful? This represents for me the old, um, school directors, boss of a job, parents, like, minimizing what I was feeling or just bullying me, my mother bullying me in public.